I am all for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and some people have different ways of explaining it. I simply explain it as uh, asking the Holy Spirit to come into you. You know, it's a basically an Acts 1 and 2 episode where Jesus says, wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. He's going to come up and out through your vocal cords and on you, and that is Acts 2, the speaking in tongues. I know a lot of churches are against that, and I encourage you that if that is a church that you're at, I would encourage you to look into the scriptures yourself because that is a very powerful tool about speaking in tongues. And if you've been running with me a while, you know that I have a whole book on that, a whole teaching, uh, looking to see if my book is here but have a whole teaching on the mysteries revealed on speaking in tongues and the powerhouse behind that. But Ephesians 6 is basically understood when you are spiritually born again. Sometimes the things of the spirit, if when people talk about the spiritual realm, angels and demons, and if there's any like, huh, I don't want to hear about that, I would encourage you, you're probably not spiritually born again. You know, a lot of people don't mind the angel part, but the word of the demons or demonic spirits of oppression or demonic activity, a lot of people don't want to believe that. It feels too scary to believe. But in all reality, it is a real thing. Jesus had to cast out demons, and you could find that in the word of God. He cast out demons. They manifested. One guy had legion of demons. They're real. They did not go away when Jesus came and went. They are still present. <laughs> right, Sasha? Sasha, my kitty cat down here, is, 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 is agreeing down here. And uh, so let's look at Ephesians 6. Looking at Ephesians 6, verse 10, I know a lot of the Sunday schools talk about this, and it's wonderful, about the armor of God. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you are able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now you are going to stand up against the, the principalities of the devil. It's what you are called to do. That, uh, looking at verse 11, it says, now put on the whole armor of God that you are able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And then it goes on to saying, therefore, take up your armor of God that you're able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And then it goes on to talk about your different parts of your armor, which is a whole beautiful, 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 beautiful chapter. Love Ephesians 6. I read it often to encourage myself in the Lord and just to just constantly be uh, aware of my spiritual armor. In the spiritual realm, when you have your armor on, the demonic realm cannot see who it is. And what it sees is Jesus. When you are living and walking in the spirit, the demonic realm sees Jesus. You have your armor on. You are looking and you are become one like he is one. You have become one with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in the spiritual realm, the demonic realm doesn't know the difference. God, you know, they, that is a very powerful testimony I tell in one of my book, that book, Mysteries Revealed on Speaking in Tongue, when I talk about the uh, bikers, demons, and tattoos. God had showed me that. I was terrified, I'll be honest with you, when I cast out my first demon. I was scared. And God told me, he goes, Tina, that demon does not see you. It sees Jesus. You have your armor on. Now, and I did, of course, verse 18, now pray in the Holy Spirit, Tina. You got your armor on. Now pray in the Holy Spirit. In order to beat the demonic realm, the spiritual principalities of darkness and and the rulers of darkness, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And why you, if you're scared of the Holy Spirit, I ask why? Why would you be scared of the Holy Spirit? He is our teacher. He's our comforter. He's the very presence that raised Jesus from the dead. You need the Holy Spirit to be raised from the dead later. You know, you need him so prominent in your life. The God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, they're all three different, and yet they're all three one.
And right now, let's just do a prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you are shining wisdom and knowledge that yes, Satan is my enemy and he is here, but Jesus has come to give me life and life more abundantly. I tap into the power and the presence of God, asking for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in all things. I learned today to take my authority and power back through the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you that today I will walk in a greater victory and I will learn more about you and your kingdom and your ways and be able to resist the enemy in Jesus name. Amen. I'm Tina Jackson and thank you so much for joining today. If you liked today's video, be sure to like, subscribe and share. For the full length version, click on the link to the side. And don't forget that you are a beautiful creation in Christ Jesus.